In today's lesson, we're diving into the world of real conversations, and here's why it's a game changer for your English journey. By immersing yourself in genuine talks, dialogues, and conversations, you're not just learning. You're turbocharging your ability to understand spoken English. It's like upgrading from watching a trailer to experiencing the whole movie. At Speak Up Channel, we're not just about lessons. We're your companions on the road to fluent English. Think of this as your passport to a world where you not only grasp the language, but effortlessly express yourself like a native speaker. These conversations, talks, and dialogues are your secret weapon, the key to unlocking language skills that go beyond the basics. So buckle up. You're not just here to learn, you're here to thrive in English. Welcome to Speak Up Channel, where we're turning everyday conversations into your ticket to speaking English with fluency and confidence. Let's begin, and don't forget to tell us how much you can understand. Social psychology, a slippery concept. Why common sense is not actually very common. In 1776, Thomas Paine, a traitorous Englishman living in the American colonies, published a seditious 47-page pamphlet. Called Common Sense, it became a bestseller. It argued that the colonies should seek independence from British rule. Later that year, they did exactly that. Appeals to common sense are a staple of politics, especially when an insurgent wishes to distinguish himself from a supposedly aloof and out-of-touch elite. But in a paper published in Proceedings of the National Academy of Sciences, Mark Whiting and Duncan Watts, a pair of computational social scientists at the University of Pennsylvania, note that the idea has seldom been rigorously studied. The two researchers set out to fix that. They started by noting that the standard concept of common sense has a somewhat circular definition. Common sense is a set of claims that sensible people agree with, and sensible people are those who possess common sense. To get around such philosophical tangles, the researchers turned to Mechanical Turk, a website run by Amazon, a big tech firm that allows people to post odd jobs. They recruited 2,046 human participants and asked them to rate 50 statements from a corpus of 4,407 claims that might plausibly be seen as commonsensical. As common sense might have predicted, the researchers found that plainly worded claims concerning facts about the real world were the most likely to be rated as demonstrating common sense. Triangles have three sides, for example, which is true by definition, or avoid close contact with people who are ill. The more abstract the claims, the less likely participants were to agree that they were common sense. All human beings are created equal. Perception is the only source of knowledge. When they split the claims by subject, the researchers found that those concerning technology and science were the most likely to be rated as commonsensical, while matters of history and philosophy were the least likely. A respondent's age, sex, income and personal politics had little effect on what they thought counted as common sense, although psychological measures of social perceptiveness and the ability to reflect on one's opinions did. Having investigated individual opinions, the researchers looked at how common sense works across big groups. Here, they found much less agreement than might have been expected. Only around 44% of claims in the corpus were rated as commonsensical by at least 75% of respondents. A stricter definition of common sense, in which everyone has to agree with a claim for it to count, cut that number to just 6.6%. Where exactly a sensible cut-off lies is a matter for debate, but truly common sense, it seems, is an elusive thing.
Come in, Mike. Have a seat. Thanks. Are you busy? Well, I'm trying to finish this progress report, and I could do with some help. Is this the progress report the directors have requested? Yeah, I've written the introduction, but that's as far as I've got. Listen, as requested, this is a report containing an assessment of the new health food shop, which was opened in the Sutherland area last June. I've also worked out what I need to include in the report. You know, the subheadings, but I need to write out the details.、Uh, let me look at that. Okay. Under the first subheading, you could write: In the eight months the shop has been open. Sales have risen steadily.、Uh, the figures for the month of December show that there has been a hundred and forty percent increase in sales since the branch was opened.、Mm -hmm, that sounds good. What about the next one? Well, you should give details about the products. For example, you could say at present there is a promotion for the new lines of vitamins and herbal drinks.、Uh, the vitamin line, which consists of a whole range of supplements. For use by everyone is selling exceptionally well. Consumer interest in Herbadent, a kind of herbal toothpaste, is less than was expected. However, as with all new products, some time is needed for shoppers to learn about it. Uh huh. That sounds fine. And I thought that under the next subheading, I could write, although the shop is relatively new, sales. Have already surpassed those of several of the competitor shops. Recent figures indicate that in the last six months, it has moved from twelfth place in the market to seventh place. Uh huh. Uh huh. That leaves the last one. Let's see. How about the television campaign that was launched in August has been successful?、Uh, this is indicated by the fact that when asked how they found out about the new shop. Over half the customers said that they had seen the advert on television. Well, that didn't take too long. Thanks, Mike. Now I'll just finish it by writing a recommendation. You will hear the librarian of a new town library talking to a group of people who are visiting the library. Okay, everyone. So, here we are at the entrance to the town library. My name is Anne, and I'm the chief librarian here. And you'll usually find me at the desk just by the main entrance here. So, I'd like to tell you a bit about the way the library is organised and what you'll find where. And you should all have a plan in front of you. Well, as you see, my desk is just on your right as you go in, and opposite this, the first room on your left, has an excellent collection of reference books, and is also a place where people can read or study peacefully. Just beyond the librarian's desk on the right. Is a room where we have up-to-date periodicals such as newspapers and magazines, and this room also has a photocopier, in case you want to copy any of the articles. If you carry straight on, you'll come into a large room, and this is the main library area. There is fiction in the shelves on the left, and. Non-fiction materials on your right, and on the shelves on the far wall, there is an excellent collection of books relating to local history. We are hoping to add a section on local tourist attractions too later in the year. Through the far door in the library, just past the fiction shelves, is a seminar room, and that can be booked for meetings or talks. And next door to that is the children's library, which has a good collection of stories and picture books for the under elevens. Then there's a large room to the right of the library area, that's the multimedia collection, where you can borrow DVDs and so on. And we also have CD-ROMs you can borrow to use on your computer at home. It was originally the art collection. But that's been moved to another building, and that's about it. 
Oh, uh, there's also the library office on the left of the librarian's desk. Ah, uh, OK. Now, does anyone have any questions? Uh, yes, thank you, sir. The Ant and the Grasshopper One hot summer's day, a grasshopper sat on a blade of grass enjoying the sunshine. What a fine day, he said. The sun's shining and I've got as much grass as I can eat. The grasshopper spent the whole morning stuffing his face until he couldn't eat another thing. Right, he said, now I'll make some music. He rubbed his back legs against his wings and made a loud buzzing sound. <laughs> Lovely, said the grasshopper. Nothing better than the sound of a happy grasshopper. Give it a rest, said a passing ant. <laughs> what? said the grasshopper. I'm trying to work here, said the ant. You're giving me a headache. You don't like my music, said the grasshopper. Not my kind of thing, said the ant. Anyway, ain't got time to stand around talking about music. Got stuff to do. Stuff, said the grasshopper. What stuff have you got to do in a lovely sunny morning like this? Got to get this food shifted, said the ant. The grasshopper noticed that the ant was dragging along a huge ear of corn. That looks like hard work, mate, said the grasshopper. Tell me about it, said the ant. What are you doing with it? said the grasshopper. Taking it to our nest, said the ant. What are you doing that for? Food for the winter, said the ant. Got to get ready for the winter. Why? said the grasshopper. Winter won't come for ages. Won't be winter till the winter. It's summer now. Why worry about the winter? We always worry about the winter, said the ant. We spend all summer gathering up food for the winter. It's what we ants do. It's not what grasshoppers do, said the grasshopper. We grasshoppers know how to enjoy the summer. Eat, sleep, make some cool music. It's a fine life. We grasshoppers know how to live, see? Right, said the ant. I'll leave you to it. Don't go, ant, mate, said the grasshopper. Stick around. Pass the day with me. Sorry, said the ant. Like I said, I've got stuff to do. The ant dragged his ear of corn and struggled off across the field. Please yourself, called the grasshopper. I'm not bothered. I've got stuff to do too. Got all this grass to eat. Got the sun to enjoy. Not going to waste a lovely day like this talking to ants. Have you ever seen a more silly creature than an ant? shouted the grasshopper. It was winter. The grasshopper was cold. Too cold to hop. Too cold to make his music. And he was hungry. He'd spent all day looking for something to eat. Suddenly, he saw the ant. Hello, ant, he shivered. R remember me? Yep, said the ant. Cold, isn't it? said the grasshopper. Nice and warm in our nest, said the ant. Not so much to eat now, is there? said the grasshopper. We've got plenty, said the ant. Our storerooms are full of seeds and corn, got loads of food, enough to see us safely through to spring. Loads of food, eh? said the grasshopper. Look, mate, I don't suppose I could... I don't suppose you'd be able to give me... You said you'd never seen a more silly creature than an ant, said the ant. I didn't mean that, said the grasshopper. That was just a joke. Oh, come on, just a couple of ears of corn. You can spare it. I've got nothing. Sorry, mate, said the ant. If you save up on the days when you have plenty, then there'll never be a day when you have nothing. The ant hurried down into his warm nest, knowing that he'd never, ever see that grasshopper again. We hope you have enjoyed our program. Subscribe for more helpful content and come to learn English with us.